OK, so now in example three, uh, what I want to do is show you how to determine the zeros and the multiplicity by factoring. So you can see that what we talked about in the warm up that you know when we have a linear factorization, it's very easy to be able to identify the zeros as well as identify the multiplicity. So in each of the examples that we're going to work on, and I have quite a bit, so I'm going to try to not spend too much time going over factoring techniques. Um, but you can see that we none of these are written as a product of, of linear factors. So that's going to be our main objective, is to write them as a product of linear factors so we can therefore identify the zeros and multiplicity. And again, the idea of going from a, an expression you know, that is um, in standard form, you know, separated by addition or subtraction, subtraction, like a polynomial, and then rewriting them as a multiplication problem is the process of factoring. Even though, on, you know, on this first example, we could actually get away from solving this without factoring. But I'm going to kind of talk to you about why we want to use linear factorization and why we want to write it in that way rather than just solving using the square root method. But there's nothing wrong with using the square root method. But what we'll see later is sometimes how that can um, actually pr help uh, prevent us from actually finding all the solutions. But in this example, it's a quadratic, right? We have 0 equals x minus 9. And a lot, of, a lot of students will just immediately get to, well, I could factor this, but I don't really like factoring. So why don't I just go ahead and you know solve this, right? And you can do it for that problem. There's actually nothing wrong with that for this quadratic. Um, you can just add 9 to both sides. But students usually make a mistake here when they go ahead and take the square root. And they kind of forget that when we introduce the square root to solve for x, we have to include plus or minus 9. Oh, I'm sorry, plus or minus 3, right? So the solutions are going to be plus or minus 3. And, and then also, it's not very obvious in this case, like what exactly is the multiplicity. So the, that's why kind of factoring is very helpful. So in this case, we notice that this is a difference of two squares. So therefore, I can actually solve this another method, which is be to factor this using the difference of two squares. x minus 3 times x plus 3. OK, and again, you can check my factoring. If you want to multiply this back, you'll see that the middle terms you know, add to 0, so you're just left with x squared minus 9. But now that we've written it down as a linear factorization, right? it's separated by a product, we can see that the, and both of the factors are linear. right? They're both x to the first power. We can see the power of each of these linear factors is 1. So when I write my zeros, you know, I can write, I'll just write them in set notation, plus or minus 3. And then I can just say they both have a multiplicity of 1. So what I did is I did provide a link for you to kind of go onto Desmos and kind of look at the graph. So therefore, you can kind of verify. I'm not going to do it for the video because I don't want the video to go on for that long. Um, but you can definitely go and use that link to go ahead and look at the zeros and then obviously make sure that when it has an odd multiplicity, it's crossing. And then when it has an even multiplicity, it's going to be bouncing. So the other reason about factoring is you know, students like this method you know, because it's rather simple, something you're used to. But then they try to like use that same method over here. And what I you know, previously, you know, previously showed in the previous examples is that that comes up to an issue. Here we have two x's. In this example, we only had one x. So using inverse operations worked. In this example, though, um, we have two x's. So we can't apply that same inverse operations. It's just not going to work. And then also, we've got to be careful now, because um, when we have something raised to the third power, using the, you know, the cube root method is not going to provide all of the zeros. It will help us with identifying the real zeros, but we'll talk about you know, finding all the real zeros later. Either way, I don't want to get off too much on a tangent. What I want to try to focus you on is factoring. Don't try to avoid the factoring technique. Really look into writing these as a product of linear factors. So when we have two terms, basically what we're looking at is either you apply the difference of two squares or looking to factoring out HECF. And in this case, you can see that both of these terms have an x in common. So I'm going to factor out an x first. And now, by factoring out an x, what you can see is, again, I have another example of difference of two squares. Now, you could go ahead and solve these separated you know, both ways, but um, you know, now use the zero product property and then go ahead and solve this, since it is a you know, quadratic and we can solve from there. Um, but I think it's just preferred to write these as linear factorization using the difference of two squares. So therefore, I have x minus 2 and x plus 2. So now, I could apply the zero product property, write it all out, write them all equal to 0, and solve. But we already did that, so we're going to kind of move on. So let's just write the solution set here as 0. Uh, and then you know, I'll just write them out 2 and negative 2. 
Now, since they all have a multiplicity of 1, I'm just going to write multiplicity of 1. Ooh, that wasn't what it's supposed to work. And they all have a multiplicity of 1, OK? And again, you can see that because all of these linear factors, and again, you could write this as x minus 0 to the first. Okay, instead of just writing x, you could write as x minus 0. Um, but you can see they all have a multiplicity of 1. All right, so now we have another example, but now this one's even raised to the fourth. Um, but again, we want to be able to look at, you know, when you have two terms, always look for the GCF first, and then, you know, possibly look for difference of two squares. And difference of two squares is not always going to be there, but for these examples, they are. So I can take out an x squared. And when I take out an x squared, I have an x squared minus 16. And then again, I can follow through this. So therefore, this can be. Now again, if you didn't really understand this, you know, we don't, this is a linear factor, but it's raised to the second power. So we could write this as x minus 0 squared. Because you think about it, x minus 0 squared is really just x squared, right? But you can see here, it's a linear factor raised to the power of 2. So what that tells us is the 0 of 0 is, has a multiplicity of 2, which is even. So therefore, it's going to be bouncing, where this, this um, so x-intercept at 0 has an odd multiplicity of 1. So therefore, it's going to cross. And then I can just go ahead and write these out. This is going to be x minus 4, x plus 4. Okay, so knowing the, uh, obviously, I'm not explaining, you know, factoring by the difference of two squares, because that's a, you know, a technique we want to make sure that we are comfortable with, you know, getting into this material. So I do have extra resources, obviously, if you need more help as far as how am I factoring all of these. But hopefully you kind of notice the patterns with the square numbers and that factoring technique. So now I'm going to have some different multiplicities here. This has an even multiplicity, and these have a odd multiplicity, right? So when I write my solution set, I'm just going to write a 0, and I'm just going to write this one has a multiplicity of 2. And then I'm just going to write plus or minus 4, plus or minus 4 with a multiplicity of 1. Okay, And I'm just writing it this way. I mean, it really kind of depends on you know, how your teacher wants you to, you know, write it. I usually, um, if they all have the same multiplicity, I'm okay with them just writing all of them and saying multiplicity of one or, you know, labeling each zeros with its multiplicity. So it really just kind of depends on, you know, the question and how things are presented to you um, as far as what is the correct notation to write with the zeros and multiplicity. Okay, so on the first, first three examples, we really just kind of focused in on looking at uh, binomials, okay, and factoring, um, factoring polynomials that only have two terms. And again, just to kind of summarize, look into factoring out the GCF and then look for difference of two squares. Those are kind of our two helpful techniques. Now we're looking at trinomials. That's going to kind of go back to what we uh, you know, previously looked at. We want to be able to factor trinomials into the product of two more binomials. So now these um, are a little bit different than like our quadratic binomials. And you should be pretty familiar with factoring quadratics. So my idea here is just to, if you know a quadratic trinomial factors into two binomials, right, use that thinking process to factor these. And also, kind of go back to what we did in the last one, is look into always trying to factor out GCFs first, right? That's going to help you with all of your factoring techniques, is if you can identify any common terms, get, factor those out first. So in this example, you can see they all share an x. So what first thing I'm going to do is factor out a common x. So I factor out an x, I'm left with x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay, And just like in the last three examples, we had the difference of two squares. When you're looking at trinomials, you also want to look for perfect square trinomials. That can help you out a lot in your factoring techniques. And um, so what we're doing is, again, we're looking for what two numbers multiply to give us 9, but then add to give us 6. And what we notice is the exact same number. It's 3 and 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 plus 3 is 6, right? So this is what we call a perfect square trinomial. And the reason why we call it perfect square trinomial is because the first term is a perfect square, and the last term is a perfect square, and then the middle term is 2 times um, two times the, you know, the square root of both of those terms, roughly. So what that means is if I was going to factor this, I get into x plus 3 times x plus 3. Now, when we look into identifying the zeros, we see that these all have a linear factor of 1, right? So you might be, uh, you might be tempted to say, oh, it's all have a multiplicity of 1. But the key on multiplicity 
which we didn't really like emphasize much, is multiplicity is basically repetition. It's the repetition of the zeros. And we talked about, you know, it bounces when it's even and crosses when it's odd. But I want you to see this x plus 3 is showing up twice, right? So I can actually write this. I'm going to write the x as x minus 0. So I can write this as x minus 0, right? That's to the odd of 1, to the, one, to the first power. And then I have x plus 3. Well, x plus 3 times x plus 3 is x plus 3 squared. Right? So it's the 0 is negative 3, right? If I set this equal to 0 and solve, I'm going to get x equals negative 3. But it happens twice. It's repeated. That's what multiplicity is. The multiplicity is your repetition of your 0. So that's very important because now when I write my zeros, I'm going to have 0, which is a multiplicity of 1. And I'm going to have a 0 of negative 3, which has a multiplicity equal to 2. So if you go ahead and look at this graph, you'll see that the graph is going to cross at 0, and it's going to bounce at negative, um, negative 3. So it really only has two x-intercepts, but that x-intercept of negative 3 is repeated. And that's why the number of zeros adds up to the kind of 3. And another kind of trick you can look at is the multiplicity always adds up to your like degree, or at least if you're real zeros, you're going to add, that's going to add up to your power. right? So you can see here. Um, one, two, three, three, right? One, two, two, okay? Um, and we'll kind of see more of these um, as we get into more examples. All right, so the next one, um, again, looking at my, you know, factoring techniques, I see that x now, I see this is raised to the fourth power. And this usually brings up a lot of uh, confusion with students because they're familiar with factoring quadratics, right? And But once we kind of raise the power, it gets a little confusing. So what I'm going to introduce for this is what we call the substitution method. So on the substitution method, what we're going to do is forget about x to the fourth. I'm going to say, let's let x to the fourth equal x squared. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite this whole equation. If x to the fourth is equal to x squared, then that's x squared minus and then 18. So if I'm basically saying x to the fourth is x squared, then what is x squared? Well, then x squared is just going to equal x. OK? Now, if I wanted to look into factoring this, OK? Let's go back to red. So if I want to look into factoring this, again, I notice that x squared is a perfect square, and 81 is a perfect square. And I think about, all right, what two numbers multiply to give me 81? Um, that are exact, that are possibly exactly the same. That's 9 and 9. Well, do those add up to give me my middle term? Yes, negative 18. Negative 9 plus negative 9 is negative 18. So that means I can write this as a perfect square trinomial. I can bypass factoring it out like this and just skip right to the binomial square. Another thing that we practice, remember, in completing the square. So the problem is, if I wanted to factor this, I can do that with my binomials. I can factor that as, you know, x minus 9 squared, okay? But the thing is, we got to remember, x minus 9 squared is going to give me x squared minus 18x plus 81. And actually, um, let me actually write this out. I'll expand this, even though I could shortcut it. Let me write this out. Because I really want you to kind of see, um, therefore, if x to the fourth is x squared, that means x squared has to equal x, right? So that's where x squared is going to equal x. So that's important because x times x gives us x squared. But again, if we're trying, what we're trying to do is we're trying to factor this. So we're trying to factor this so these two multiply to give us this. So we don't want x times x to give us x squared. We want x times x to give us x to the fourth. So all we need to do is look at, well, x squared is equal to x. So therefore, if I'm given x's, I need to write these as x squared. OK? And let's, do let's double check our work. Let's make sure this works out. Like, you know, let's. You know, double check to make sure this is good. x squared times x squared is x squared. x squared times negative 9 is a negative 9 x squared. Negative 9 times x squared is a negative 9 x squared. Negative 9 times negative 9 is positive 81. Does that give us our original problem? Yes, it does, right? So what we want to do is when you have something raised to a higher power, make sure it follows the pattern. Like make sure it's not, you know, something where you can factor out the GCF. Um, but so make sure it has like those reduction of the of the variables of the exponents and then just factor it like a quadratic and then just raise the power of the factors. Now, we're still not done here because this is x squared minus 9 and this is really um, x squared minus 9 squared. 
Now, the problem with identifying the multiplicity, I can go ahead and find the zeros, right? I can just you know, use the square root method, but that might not be helpful as far as identifying the zeros of this, um, of this expression. So actually rewriting it as a binomial squared is not really going to be helping me identify the zeros. I want to write this as the linear factorization, right? We want to write this as linear factors. These are not linear factors. That is not a linear factor. So actually what I can do is rather than doing this step, bringing them together like I did over here, I can factor these two out because they're both difference of two squares. And if I factor these out further, what I get is x minus 3 times x plus 3 times x minus 3 times x plus 3. And now, look at I have x minus 3 twice, x plus 3 twice. So I can rewrite this as x minus 3 squared and x plus 3 squared. Just going to fix my 3 here. OK? So now what that sees is I have four real zeros. I have, uh, but there are only two x-intercepts, but they're repeated. They're both even. And if you look at this graph, you'll see that they're both bouncing in this case. So my zeros are going to be plus or minus 3, and they both have a multiplicity equal to 2. Okay? So again, that's why it comes to that point. A lot of people get stuck here, and they'll find the zeros, but they'll think of they won't see that multiplicity. So always try to write things out as linear factors. And again, that's when the x is raised to the first power, whereas the power of the factor is going to be your multiplicity, which in here, you could say they're all 1, but when you group them together, you can see how they're both squared. All right, so here's another example here of x squared minus 10x plus 9. So again, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say, all right, well, let's just, do re let's just replace this. Um, let's think of this as x squared minus 10x plus 9. How could I factor that? What two numbers multiply to give me 9, add to give me negative 10? Okay, that's going to be x minus 9 times x minus 1, right? But these two multiply to give me x squared. I want to get x to the fourth. Now, a question that might have come up to your head, it's come up to my students, it's come up to my students before, is what, what about x cubed times x? Hmm, interesting, right? Let's maybe see why can we do cube and uh, cube and, you know, why can we do x cubed times x? Because that gives you x to the fourth. Well, let's take a look at that real quick. So if I have x minus 9 and x minus 1, if I raise this to the third power, yes, x cubed times x gives you x to the fourth, right? But then you have x cubed times negative 1, which is x cubed, and you have negative 9 times x, which gives you negative 9x, and then you have plus 9. The problem is your middle terms don't combine to give you x squared. That's why we want things to be in terms of x squared. So I'm just going to delete that because I don't want you to like say, oh, that's a good idea. Because <laughs> it's not a good idea. You don't want to do it that way. Um, or try to do it that way. It's not going to work. But all we need to do is just raise the power of the factors, x squared and x squared. Okay. Now, again, these are not written as linear factors. So from here, I am just going to, um, I'm just going to factor them, again, using difference of two squares, x minus 3, x plus 3 and then x minus 1 times x plus 1. Okay, and now you can see I have a whole bunch of zeros, all linear zeros, and they all have odd multiplicity. So my solution set here is going to be plus or minus 3 and plus or minus 1, and they all have a multiplicity equal to 1. 